responsibility of the person to handle that. Okay, hi, welcome. Okay, so the, the recording is in progress. I'm glad something is making progress. Now, uh, speaking of which, we are making progress. We're already at chapter 49 of Isaiah. That's pretty good. Now, this part of the book talks about, continues to talk about the, um, the redemption and salvation primarily at the end of days. So at this, but at this juncture, we're talking about how um, Israel played a special role, even though it felt a bit alienated uh, because of uh, Israel had sins and Israel had exile. And between the two of them, it doesn't make them feel like they are, you know, uh, they are newly, uh, newly redeemed. But uh, in this, these chapters, we're going to explain why Israel should feel like they're worthy of redemption. And uh, God is going to make a commitment to Israel that will actually preclude the possibility of alternative monotheistic religions coming to fruition out of, uh, you know, sprouting from Judaism if people actually read the entire uh, uh, book of, of Isaiah. <laughs> people quote one chapter out of context, so that's different. But were you to read the entire book of Isaiah, and uh, we're already at 49 of 66 chapters, then you would, we will see that um, it's impossible for Israel, the, the covenant of Israel and uh, toward God and God towards Israel to ever be nullified. So it's, we're going to start to get um, some explicit, um, some explicit verses. Let's see. That comes. Oh, chapter probably fifty one is going to start some explicit verses. No, I stand corrected. Chapter fifty should have some explicit verses on that already. Okay, so let's let's go through forty nine. And, and um, you know, it's, it's important if somebody's feeling down, you know, let's say a, a spouse was feeling down and, and they don't feel like they're, they're worthy of the other spouse. So they're not going to be as diligent for the uh, anniversary party. But if the, 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 the spouse that doesn't feel down cheers them up and says, you know, I, I, you know it's, it's like the first day we met, you know, and stuff like that. So then hopefully the person bounces back and they can start having a, a wonderful party together. So that's, that's like the context of this current chapter, 49. And then in 50, uh, God is going to talk about how this will continue forever. And forever means even uh, beyond the destruction of a temple. Okay. All right, here we go. Chapter 49 in the Hebrew, then we'll have volunteer uh, translators in English using Masoretic text, preferably art scroll, but the main thing is a Masoretic text. Shimu iyim elai havakshibu umim merachok. Adonai mi beten kura'ani. Mim eimi hizkir shmi. Vayasem pi kichariv chada. Okay, Okay, can we have a translator of the first four verses of 49? Translator into English. Listen to me, O islands, and hearken, O distant regimes. Hashem summoned me from the belly. He mentioned my name from my mother's womb. He made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me like a smooth arrow. 
in his quiver, he concealed me. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I take glory. But I said, I have toiled in vain and used up my strength for nothingness and naught. However, my judgment is with Hashem, the reward for my accomplishment is with my God. Very good. Okay, so several of the Rishonim, Rashi, Radak, Ibn Ezra, uh, take this perspective as Isaiah talking about himself as representative of Israel. Um, the, the chapters are going to, uh, well, even this chapter is going to morph uh, directly into only talking about from the perspective of Israel, Isaiah um, uh, completely uh, humbling himself out of the picture um, to just let the, the, the dialogue be between God and Israel, God and Israel. And uh, you're going to see that from the context. And it's interesting. This is we're getting closing in on chapter 53, which doesn't mention uh, anyone else. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't mention uh, even Jacob. Certainly doesn't mention anyone else for, mentioned in any uh, different uh, text. Uh, so there's no reason to assume the dialogue has changed. And you're going to see from the context it hasn't changed at all. Okay, so now uh, let's take it piece by piece. Um, in verse, in verse one, we talk about uh, islands. So the Malbum says that islands refers to on the other side of the world. So that that includes um, Manhattan Island, Hawaii, all, everything in between. You know. Um, uh, so it's it's uh, fascinating. This is a direct a direct prophecy to uh, the the Gentiles in the islands. Rabbi, I can't hear you. I am unmuted now. Okay, great. Unmuted translates as hearable. Okay, so now, uh, so uh, the islands refers to um, the islands on the other side of the world, according to Malbum. And, and of course, the only time in history this could really happen is in the electronic communication age, or in uh, an age where you have um, travel between these parts of the world and, and the Holy Land. And both of them have occurred in the past, uh, past couple hundred years. So this is talking to the Gentiles in the distant islands in a time with the current technology that we have. In other words, it's to these generations uh, that we're in now. So this is, but this is this is God recognizing uh, the the nations and 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 speaking to him through Isaiah, who was a prophet of Israel. Yes. So now, in verse two, he says, "God made my tongue a, a sharp sword." What's a sharp sword? It's that you know it, when when someone, even if they have a wrong religious faith. If they're trying to serve the God of Abraham, you know, it's like um, it's like an uneasy concept that they're trying to serve the God of Abraham, and then they're going to be have by telling them the truth. Now they're going to realize something's incomplete, and that's an uncomfortable feeling. You know, you wouldn't want anyone to feel like they're they're on a uh, they took the wrong train. They're on the, the they're going in the wrong direction. So th their intentions were, were good. They're trying to serve the God of Israel. 
and yet there's going to be an awakening in these a couple of chapters that it has to be a connection between God and Israel that never breaks and then the Torah of God could reach the, the nations otherwise it's going to be corrupted okay that okay so that is verse two verse three you are my servant Israel in whom I glory. So Israel is, is the one that God is having glory in. Now, the, so that, that, that is not, it doesn't sound like a harsh prophecy outside of, you know, just as a outside perspective. But if you consider from the perspective of people who are not yet Israel, that could be painful if they're told, not necessarily you, but Israel is the one I'm getting glory to the world through. You know, I'm saying this is so God's first message is that I understand this is this could be painful, but my, the Torah I gave through Israel is how I'm bringing merit to the world. No offense to any attempt to try to serve me. But if you want to serve me according to my will, you have to go through Israel. Verse 4. But I said, Isaiah speaking for Israel, that he, he toiled in vain, used up his strength for, for nothingness and naught. However, my judgment is with Hashem, and the, the, the reward for my accomplishment is with God. So, from the perspective of Isaiah, the commentary uh, talks about um, uh, that his, his reproof was not heard uh, directly in his generation as quickly as he would have liked. From the perspective of Israel, this refers to the fact that um, uh, Israel went after that which was not godly, and it was for nothing. It, 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 they acquired nothing from it. All the riches that, for example, they acquired in in uh, in in Spain before the expulsion in 1492, that that was either gone, confiscated, or or they just had to take a small percentage and smuggle it out. Same uh, in Germany, same in in Russia. You know, in, in countless uh, situations, uh, the materialism uh, and material wealth accumulation by Israel. In the time of each expulsion uh, from each country that they were expelled from, uh, it, it was like for nothing. But from the Israel's perspective, they trust God's judgment, that God will see their, their affliction and forgive them because of the pain that they went through. And um, th they'll be rewarded for any good that they did as well. Okay, first four verses. So, so it's, it's fascinating. You know, Isaiah is not making this up. He, he's saying the word of God. It's filtered through the prophet. God sometimes does this. He did it for Moses as well. Uh, God kind of helps us to, to get a sense of the personality of the, the vessel he is using to communicate to the world. So, Sometimes we see the personality of, of Moses or Isaiah come across to us, like, like we see here in this chapter. But it's God's word coming to us. Any human God would use, this sort of thing would happen sooner or later. Uh, so so it's, it's fascinating that Isaiah takes the, um, you know, for example, this is very different than, than uh, Jonah. Uh, the prophet Jonah, he did not want to save, save Ninveh. He wanted to protect Israel. Uh, Isaiah, uh, he is the one giving the prophecy of God to the nation, the light unto the nations. So he wants the salvation of the, of the Gentiles of the world as well. And it's, it's like very gentle, a, very, a sign of his gentleness that he, he says, because he's going to praise Israel instead of a nation that's trying to serve God but is not really doing the right, correct uh, path, uh, because he's going to praise Israel instead of them, it, this may be painful to you. 
It's a very, very sweet uh, prophecy. Okay, now let's continue in the Hebrew in uh, verse 5, and uh, then we'll again have another translator. Vatamar Adonai Yotzrei Ami Betan, Laevid Ol Shovev, Yaakov Elav Yisrael, Lo Yesif, the Ekaved, the Ene Adonai, the Lohai, Haya Uzi. We are married Nakel, Mehios Hali Evid, Lakim S. Shifte Yaakov, Unutsura Yisrael, Hashiv and Satiha, La Orgoim, the Yos Yushuasi, I'd say hearts. Okay, can we have a translator? Verses five and six. And now Hashem, who formed me from the belly to be a servant to him, said I should return Jacob to him so that Israel would be gathered to him. So I was honored in God's eyes, and my God was my strength. He said it is insufficient that you be a servant for me only to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the ruins of Israel. I will make you a light for the nation so that my salvation may extend to the ends of the earth. So uh, four times in Isaiah, or I mean, a light unto the nations is mentioned. And in this case, it is specifically a praise of Isaiah. The first time it's mentioned early in the book, uh, we mentioned that it's uh, the, the goal. The goal is to give a light unto the nations. In this, in the middle part of the book here, the 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 uh, the source is explained. It's the Torah that God gave Isaiah. And at the end of the book is explained that uh, Israel will join with with Isaiah, and represent the light unto the nations. It will occur. You know when um, the. If, if, every, if every two generations, uh, the Jews in exile were, were, were slaughtered by one nation or the other, that means, uh, that means there's always going to be a, a, a time when you have somebody who, among the Jewish people who, who really doesn't like Gentiles, Gentiles very much. You know, that uh, uh, they would be even more, more extreme than uh, Jonah in their displeasure with Gentiles. Uh, so so uh, throughout the exile, it was, it was hard for Isaiah's Torah to be recruited um, by, uh, by, by among Israel uh, completely. That only the, uh, you know, the Torah scholars and et cetera uh, uh, would be able to, to do that and then transfer it over. But, um, you know, some regular people may not have the Torah knowledge, and some some people, even if they want to be a scholar, may not have the inclination because, like, their grandfather was 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 uh, was um, uh, killed by the uh, the nation that he lived with. Uh, so, it, it's it's in part we see that God's plan in bringing out um, stability for uh, for the Jews in um, in in the past uh, 70 years, there's been stability and lack of pogroms against the Jewish people. That's essential to enable that, um, that everyone can teach the, the light unto the nations without someone saying that, uh, yeah, but they killed my, my this or that relative. You know what I'm saying? That, that is kind of a, uh, you know, it can kind of uh, take the, the sail out of the the window of the sail if you're trying to teach that, and then somebody's complaining about the the uh, the tragedy in their family. So the, we see from God's perspective, and um, Isaiah as well, uh, is that the goal of the of God's goal for the Jewish people is to do good for the nations. We see on, on the holiday of Sukkot, Tabernacles, we just had it 
um, ending ending last week, that uh, the Jews on at the height of their joy, they pray for the Gentiles. Passover is called Yom Cheruseno, the day of our of our liberty, and uh, Shavuos is called uh, Pentecost is called uh, Yom Torah Matan Torah Seno, the day of the giving of the Torah. And uh, Sukkos, Tabernacles, is called Yom Simcha Seno, the, the day of our rejoicing. On the day of our rejoicing, when the Jews are at the height of their joy, when the Talmud says, when they're at the height of their joy, they're closest to God, and prophecy is closest to them. So, you know, it's, it's a really having spiritual joy. We're not talking about, um, not talking about um, Hinduistic pleasures. We're talking about spiritual joy it brings the shekhinah the, the divine presence closer to israel so at the height of israel's spirituality right after the fresh off of yom kippur and half of their sins were already forgiven uh, uh you know and or mo most of their sins were forgiven but uh if 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 uh half of their sins were towards people half of them towards god god expects people still to repent towards people as well Yom Kippur doesn't forgive people for hurting other people. But whatever the situation is, a, a significant amount of sins were forgiven at Yom Kippur. And immediately followed is uh, the Tabernacle Sukkot. And uh, that's uh, the, the joy of the harvest and the joy of, of being freed from sin from Yom Kippur. They work together to create Yom Simcha Seno, the day of our rejoicing. And at the pinnacle of the Jewish joy, God says, now I want you to pray for the Gentiles. So the, the establishment of, of, of a perpetual state of joy for the Jewish people enables spiritual benefits for the nations. The catch-22 of exile is that there, there's been always a certain amount of Jews who, who had family members uh, are uh, killed violently by by, um, by Gentiles until the until the point that they don't want to to talk to any Gentile. Sometimes others do. You know, I had a teacher in high school. Uh, he he lost his whole family to the Holocaust, and he became a teacher instead of instead of you know trying to avoid people because he had so much pain from people. He wanted to teach the next generation. So different people, you know, react to different ways. But the an important part of the of the Satan Satan's plan uh, was to keep Israel depressed. As long as Israel depressed, they cannot pray for the nations. If they don't pray for the nations, the nations are subject to things such as hurricanes. Hurricanes are not natural; they cannot exist to destroy good nations if Israel is praying for them in the temple. Hurricanes are only natural when there's no temple. Very interesting. Uh, and so it, uh, verse um, six, uh, verse five, God says, um, his goal is to return return Jacob to him so that Israel would be gathered to him. Uh, Jacob is Israel. So what does it mean, return Jacob to him so Israel will be gathered to him? So Jacob represents uh, Israel in exile. Israel represents Israel in the Holy Land. So by bringing Jacob to Israel, That's physically. Uh, spiritually, it refers to uh, becoming more religious, in other words. So as Israel grows spiritually, and that's easier when they're allowed to have institutions like yeshivos and, and they're not being hunted down, stuff like that. Uh, so then, verse 6, then I will make you a light for the nations, so that my salvation may extend to the ends of the earth. 
This is uh, obviously where Malbum gets his commentary on verse one. The island, even the islands at the ends of the earth, not connected by land to any, uh, any continent, even they will receive uh, God's Torah at the end of days. So, um, so Israel being God's servant comes with a responsibility. They, they have to increase their spirituality. And we see in, in the uh, Talmudic discussion about the commandments that, um, uh, you know, Gentiles have seven categories of mitzvahs, commandments, totaling between 50 and 70 commandments, according to the, uh, according to the numbers uh, discussed. And, and Israel has 613 commandments. And of course, 10 times 60 is 600. So Israel has 10 times the obligations of Gentiles towards God. And God is, is demanding that Israel comply with that for the sake of the world. If Israel complies with that, then the Orla Amin, the light unto the nations is spread. You know, it's interesting. Um, I was blessed to post a Dvar Torah online. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, I wrote a very intricate uh, uh, essay, uh, you know, about the spirituality and I gave a lot, a lot of um, nice sources and I posted it, you know, it's like it answers a very profound question. And I got like one, two or three likes, something like that. Um, and then somebody, uh, somebody, if I saw somebody said, uh, uh, Superman is cool, yay! And he has a picture of Superman, and he, he got uh, thousands of likes, you know, something like that. <laughs> something to that effect. And um, so <laughs> this that's a symbol of what it's like before uh, this divine plan comes to complete fruition. We're, we're still at the uh, beginning stages of light unto the nations, but it's starting to happen. Even now, anyone who, who uh, were to log into this, uh, to this class, for example, can be broadcast anywhere in the world. So the potential at least is there. Um, and there are many other people giving uh, these kind of classes as well. But, um, Currently, uh, it's it's still you know you just have a few people recognizing the available treasure that God gave to the world centuries ago, uh, millennia ago, here in the Book of Isaiah, and uh, you know it's just it's it's uh, beginning to to uh, take effect. But even a hundred years ago, if if Jews tried to to uh, spread too much of this knowledge, I'm sure books would have been burned. But at least now people could talk freely. This, so we're at the beginning stages of the implementation of the light unto the nations of this book. This prophecy is finally occur beginning to occur. And, and that's amazing. And specifically, this chapter refers to the Far Islands, you know. So it's, it's amazing. Okay, Rabbi. so yes, oh, okay. Isn't uh, it sure. because, isn't it because uh, most people are not familiar with like what you wrote? They don't, they didn't understand it at all. So they made humor over it. And, oh, no, they, that, they don't even, they don't even joke about it. They, they, I just like, I got three likes. You know, people didn't bother to, to read it, the question. Uh, whereas, uh, somebody giving a, a picture about of Superman and going, yeah, Superman. <laughs> that gets thousands of people liking it. You know, <laughs> it's 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 just a, it's uh, a bit spiritually vacu vacuous at times, uh, but <laughs> but it 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 goes to show that um, they like a good guy who tries to help others. That's that's judge favorably 
Superman is a good guy who tries to help others, you know, tries to help strangers. That's, that's pretty good. But they now, still didn't understand that concept. Right. So, so, but, you know, the, the main thing is spirituality, not physicality. Mm-hmm. Superman is the opposite. It's, it's, it's like the, the right. Greek version, the Greek version of, of what, uh, of what a righteous man would be. Right. Uh, but uh, the version God commanded was spirituality first. Mm-hmm. Spirituality that, that fuels other spirituality. So, you know, and it, it, it can be difficult because, um, again, you don't have every nation in the world, you know, trying to, uh, you know, soothe Israel's pain. You know, the secular state of Israel even had to deal with people trying to deny their right to exist. They had to deal with war. And uh, they had to deal with um, unfair treatment at the United Nations. Yeah. But uh, the, the important thing is spirituality. If, if we could continue uh, spreading the light, so only good will happen. So Israel is the light unto the nations, like, like the lighthouse of God, that his salvation may extend to the ends of the earth. In other words, you just have to spread the light and then there's salvation. Mm-hmm. Redemption means physical. Salvation means spiritual. So simply by hearing the right of our Torah at the right time, the right Torah discussion at the right time, uh, then anyone in the world can be instantly elevated and start to the process of making God proud of them. Because God, if he wanted to, just could have only made Israel if Israel is the ideal. Why didn't God make only Israel? God, in fact, you know, in our generation, over 99% of the world's population is not Israel. So that means God likes regular people too. (laughs) So that means everybody has to connect to God somehow. But until they do, you know, there has to be some a spiritual think tank to hold down the spiritual needs of the world until everybody joins them. And and so far, you know, we've seen that that has to be Israel. The, another reason why it has to be Israel is because look what happened. All, the alternative religions popped up, claiming uh, to replace Israel, or in, in one case. Uh, even claiming to be a new form of Israel. But that cannot be. And uh, the next chapter is going to tell us, uh, hopefully we get to it tonight. Okay, let's let's uh, make more progress. Um, verse 7 in the Hebrew. And I'll call upon another translator. Kuomar denai goel Yisrael, kudosho libuzo nefesh limsoev goy, evan moshlim malachim yir uvakamu. Sarim Bishtachavu, Laman Adonai Asher, Neman Kedosh Yisro, Vaiv Chareko, Kuomar Adonai Ba'it Sratzon, Anisicha, Vyom Yushua Azarticha, Betzarcha, Vetenacha, the Baris Am, Lahakim, Eretz, Lahanchil, Chalos, Shomemos, Vemor, Lasrim, Tseu, Lasher Bachoshech, Igalu, Aldurachim, Yeru, Bachosh, Fayim, Mar Isam, Lo Yer Avu, Lo Yitz Ma'u, Lo Yakim, Sharav, Vashamesh, Kimra Hamam, Yenahagem, Baal Mabue Mayim, Yenahalem, Vasamti, Hol Horai La Darach, Umasilo Sai Yerumu, Kine Ela Merachok Yabo, Rine Ela Mitsafonu Miam, Vele Meeret Sinim, Ranu Shamaim Vigili Eretz Aretz Ufitzhu Harim Rina Kini Kamar Nayamo Baniyo Irachim. Do we have a translator of verse seven through verse thirteen?
Thus said Hashem, the Redeemer, the Redeemer of Israel and their Holy One, to the despised soul, to the one loved by nations, to the servant of rulers, kings will see you and arise. Officers will prostrate themselves because of Hashem, who is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Thus says Hashem, in the time of favor, I answer you, and on the day of salvation, I assist you. I will protect you, and I will make you the people of the covenant to restore the land and to cause you to inherit desolate heritages. <clears throat> to say to prisoners, go out, and to those in the darkness, be revealed. They will gaze along, graze along the roads and upon all the hills tops will be their pastures. They will not hunger and they will not thirst. Heat and sun will not afflict them for their merciful one will lead them and along streams of water will he guide them. I will make all my mountains into roads and all my paths will be up, uplifted. Behold, these will come from afar, and behold, these will come from the north and from the west, and these from the land of the Semites. Sing glad song, O heavens, and rejoice, O earth, O mountains. Break out in glad song, for Hashem will have comforted his people and been merciful to his meek ones. It's fascinating that the rabbis did not make this passage a part of the Haftarah that is read at least once a year in the synagogue. This is only available to somebody who, uh, who's in love with God's Torah enough to actually read the entire book. Uh, this is not just like spoon fed to the nation. So, but we see that the, even God's servants, the rabbis were merciful to the Jewish people they were not talking about even, the, um, even God servants. The yeah, because they were not talking about the the um, what the people suffering in exile could not have. So this this exile this this passage only is a source of comfort in um, in, in its fullest sense in our generations, but like from the Holocaust backward. Uh, this could have been like, um, like if it was right in the synagogue on Sabbath, people may have like sorrow, sorrowful thoughts. When will it be? When will it be then, then that uh, we will be protected and uh, by God to the extent that we could, um, uh, we could just focus on spirituality. Uh, but now in our generation, it's it's perfect. God's sense of timing, of course, is perfect. It's perfect that, that more and more classes on Isaiah uh, bring this to the world, so to speak, because uh, then everyone opens a book and reads it cover to cover. But sometimes people just sit back and watch a video. So if that's the case, I hope you're enjoying uh, the prophecy that God sent uh, to the world uh, thousands of years ago. This is, this is excellent stuff. I, I highly recommend the book. Okay, so... Um, uh, so all of this is talking about how the the pains will be pushed away, and it's interesting that um, God will create ro uh, you know roads on every mountain. Um, so, in other words, it, it could speak it physically. It could speak to two things: one, that uh, there could be new technology to make roads even on extremely hard rocks, uh, even in uh, frosty. Uh, tundra-like uh, areas, and two, that there could be airplanes that use the mountains as like their their um, as uh, their their uh, beacons and you know landmarks so they don't get lost. Uh, so it's it's fascinating. Um, and and then in verse thirteen, uh, sing glad so song of heavens, rejoice the earth, O mountains, break out in glad song. For Hashem will have comforted his people and been merciful to his meek ones. And, of course, elsewhere in this book, uh, the meek uh, shall inherit the earth. Uh, but uh, here, meek ones can mean two things. It can mean Israel, that uh, is just grateful that they survived the exile. 
and uh, so they re reach a new level of, of meekness, but it could also refer to non-Israel because it says Hashem will have comforted his people. It could have said, and be merciful to them. Instead, it says, and, and, and merciful to his meek ones. So it can refer to the meek ones among the nations of the world. So being humble is a good thing, especially in the end of days. It doesn't even talk about spiritual levels of, other than humbleness. It doesn't talk about they did all these commandments. It doesn't say th that they, they uh, surpassed their forefathers. It just says they're humble. So it, when in doubt, be humble. Okay, so now, th now the, the previous, we started uh, 47 before a half Torah started. And now we're going to start the Haftorah of Akev. Akev is um, the part of uh, Deuteronomy, uh, if you will hearken uh, to, the, to the Lord. So th that's um, that's one of the most profound uh, passages of um, of instruction in, in, in the uh, Tanakh, of course. Uh, and uh, it really speaks uh, directly to, to, the, uh, to the soul. Uh, so th the rabbi said this following pas passage corresponds to that um, uh, to that uh, in instructional uh, ch uh, chapters of Akev, uh, and um, of course instruction in Hebrew is called Musar. So if you ever heard the word Musar, so okay, so let's see what this is going to teach us, and this goes. Um, through all the way through chapter 50 until the first three verses of chapter 51. So starting here, 49 through the first three verses of 51 is considered as like one chapter. Okay, seven, let's see, uh, verse 14. Batomer Tzion Azavani Adonai Vadonai Shechechani Tzishchach Isha Ula Okay, can we have a translator of verses uh, 14 and 15? Zion said, Hashem has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her baby or not feel compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you upon my palms. Your walls are before me always. Okay, let's pause. Okay, so... Now, when God says, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy, right? So that means every Sabbath, God wants us to remember the Sabbath. It doesn't mean, okay, remember it once and then just party uh, any, uh, in any Hinduistic manner as, as much as you want. Uh, it means have a life of remembrance. So this is another um, expression of, of God's connection to Israel. There, there's no complete comparison to God's connection to Israel, even a woman's love for her baby. Because if the woman's asleep, she may not be feeling the same feelings of love she had when she was awake. Uh, the baby grows up and is not uh, nice to her, she may not feel the same love she, she felt to him as a, as a baby. And if she passes from the world, she cannot continue her love. But God's love is perpetual. Perpetual. There's a perpetual light in the temple. There's perpetual service, service by Israel. There's per perpetual appreciation by God. So therefore, it's, it, there's any talk of God giving up on Israel 
is kind of ludicrous. It, it, it doesn't make sense. And we're going to see even more verses on that. Okay, so let me uh, continue in the Hebrew from uh, verse Zion 16. In Al Kapaim Chakosich, Komosach Negdi Tamid, Miharu Bonaich, Mahar Sayich, Umahari Vayich, Mimech Yetzeu, Si Saviv Enayich, Ur Ikulam Nikbetsu, Vaulach, Chayani Mumadanoi, Kihulam Kaadi, Tilbashi Usakashrim Katala. Ki harvo sayach, Bisham Mosayach, Bisham Mosayach, the Arabs, Hari Susech, Kiata Titsri, Mioshev, Varachakum Mavala Oyach, Odyomru Aznayach, Bene Shikulayach, Sarli Hamakum Goshna, Goshna Li Vaisheva, Vamart, Bilvavech, Mi Yalad Li As Ele Avani Shekula Ugal Muda Gola Vesura Vela Migi Del Hain Aninish Arti Levadi Ele Efo Hain. And we have a translator of verses 17 through 21. I can do that. <clears throat> Your children will hasten to return. Those who ruined you and those who destroyed you will leave you. Raise your eyes all around and see. They have all gathered. They have, got, they have come to you. As I live the word of Hashem, I swear that you will clothe your yourself with them all like jewelry and adorn yourself like a bride. As for your ruins and desolations and your devastated land, you will now become crowded with inhabitants and those who would devour you will be distanced. The children from whom you had been bereaved will yet say in your hearing, the place is too crowded for me. Move aside for me that I may dwell. You and you will say in your heart, who has begotten me these? I have been bereaved and alone, an exile and a wanderer. So who has reared these? Behold, I had been left by myself. Where are these from? Yeah, that's it. I'll pause there. So it, Israel's natural state in exile is that uh, it's refreshing to see another Jew because it's, it's almost uh, uncommon. Uh, so then to suddenly be surrounded by millions of Jews in Israel, uh, you know, that's, an, uh, that's a, really, uh, a really amazing thing. So it's just, um, you know, God is called the, the, the merciful one of Israel. Uh, verse 10, also, uh, the merciful one will lead them. So God's promising that the, their devastation will end. So God is promising. The, God is letting the, his prophet call him merciful. And in this context, promising to benefit Israel. And then someone else claims, no, no, no. God is giving up on Israel and, and uh, choosing us instead. 
before God has fulfilled his word to Israel, his, his, his dear promise, talking about people who suffered at length in exile, desperate for mercy. God calls, is called the merciful one. In this context, this is the prophecy that uh, the, the apostles of another religion would ask us to disregard. It doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. Um, they, have to, they, they, they have to count that God is less merciful than, than his prophet is saying. So we, we have, it takes an act of heresy just to believe that God would promise to people suffering in exile eternal salvation and then cut them off. It would also be another act of heresy to assume that God wouldn't know what's going to happen in the exile, wouldn't know that people would, would, would be, uh, you know, reduced spiritually in some sense because they're in exile. And that he promises, nevertheless, they're going to be his servants forever. And then one day, oh, that's it. I had enough of it. <laughs> put, put out an ad. We're looking for a new Israel. <laughs> what? It doesn't make sense. It's just, you see, there's so many emotions in, in this chapter. And this is not, I've never heard uh, this talked about by, by a missionary. They don't. They don't address these issues. How little do they think about the God of Isaiah uh, to not even talk about this? You just assume, obviously, uh, yes, he's merciful, and, and then it sk skip the rest of the chapter and try, you know, try to get to the next thing that they could uh, try to co-op. Okay, let's go back to the Hebrew. Uh, any questions before we do? Uh, going to go back to verse 22 in the Hebrew. Komar denoi lahim hine esa el goyim yodi vel amim arim nisi vehevi u vanayach echotzen vunosayach al kaseif tinaseno vayu malachim omnayich vusoro sehem meni kosayich apayim Eretz ish tachavulach, vafar raglayich ila chechu. Yodat ki ani adonai asher lo yevo, lo yevo shu kovoi. Okay, verses 20, 22 and 23. We, we have a translator. 22 and 23. Just two verses. Thus said my Lord, Hashem Elohim. Behold, I will raise my hand toward the nations. I will host my banner towards people, and they will bring your children in their arms, and your daughters will be carried on their shoulders. Kings will be your nurturers and their princes, wet, your wet nurses and your wet nurses. With faces to the ground, they will prostrate themselves to you, and they will lick the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am Hashem, and those who put their hope in me will be will not be ashamed. Okay, so my banner is can also be translated my flag. So not mm -hmm. until uh, the, the uh, modern times with the state of Israel was was could this be interpreted as starting to, to occur. And in this context, in verse twenty three, God promises what. Then you will know that I am Hashem, and those who put their hopes in me will not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. And then, the, of course, the uh, missionaries would say, "Well, unless unless you're unless you're Jewish, <laughs> it kind of sounds like a joke, you know. If you're actually reading Isaiah, it's uh, just today, you know. There's uh, a, a nice uh, elderly lady." Kind, you know, she she uh, honestly meant well, but she was acting in a in a non good way. Uh, she was trying to convince me to uh, uh, espouse belief in in uh, the Christian Messiah, 
Uh, and um, so she was giving me a little background. Uh, and then she then she told me, uh, uh, "Do you believe in in, in uh, uh, Mr. J, as opposed to Dr. J, who was a cool basketball player, Mr. J? Uh, so do, do you believe in him?" And I I said to, I said to her, uh, "No, I don't." <laughs> I, and then I said to her, "I believe in the God of Abraham." Uh, and then she reassured me that Mr. J was uh, uh, returning, and uh, she she uh, uh, she bid me uh, uh, farewell with a, a uh, that she would pray for me, uh, and I and I wished her I wished her well. Uh, so, but you know she, she's obviously reading from a pamphlet. She she didn't actually read this book. And with the Masoretic text, the, the text that's the only text in history that as a matter of faith, you couldn't retranslate one word without a calculation. <laughs> Literally every year, there's, there's new translations of the New Testament. Every year, mm -hmm. several new translations. And it's just, it's kind of arbitrary. But uh, with, with, uh, with the Mas Masoretic text, you need foundations to be able to prove why you should change the translation of one verse and the, the better books even when they have english they of course or another language they of course also include, include the original hebrew so the original hebrew never changes uh, so there's always the original prophecy in in the masoretic text at least in the hebrew form i have a question okay so if we say go to the store and buy milk or if we say um stop by the grocery market on your way home and pick up some cow juice or if we say um stop at the flea market uh after you leave work and um pick up some milk that has chocolate in it like that's all different translations, but it says the same thing. So what's the difference between that and, and translating different Bibles to different versions of speech that people use differently? You know, God answered your question before you, before you asked that. that, that <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. Look, mm -hmm. okay, so let's say you want to go and get some milk that has some chocolate in it, right? Look what God put on my table. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> so according to you, this is exactly the same as cow milk. But right? see, it says it says almond breeze, so it's yeah. still milk, right? Uh, and, and new that's a new translation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The latest translation. <laughs> but you uh, understand what it is, right? You know it's not Kool-Aid. Uh yeah, but um Kool-Aid probably has less allergies than milk or almonds. <laughs> so, um, uh, but, but it's, it's just fascinating how God did that. Uh, uh, God is so awesome, you know. Uh, <laughs> not all of milk is milk. <laughs> not all milk is cow milk. You ch change a, something a little, it's a lot. Now, according to Jewish law, of course, this you could eat with meat. If you did that with with the cow's milk, uh, that's that's uh, uh, guaranteed meat right. for atonement. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a big sin. Uh, that's for Jewish people. Okay, so <laughs> gotta answer that one. I didn't have to. Uh, okay. That's All right. A good so, answer too. <laughs> when God answers, it's even, it's the best, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Uh, you know, like uh, like like uh, Sinai was God's answer to Pharaoh. You know, Pharaoh was saying, you know, who can be God but but Him, uh, so to speak. And and <laughs> God comes with thunder and lightning, and you know, even uh, even uh, close encounters of the third kind couldn't match. You know. And then 
<laughs> he, he kind of answers Pharaoh, uh, you know. Okay. All right. So then you will know that I am Hashem, and those who put their hopes in me will not be ashamed. Uh, so then, now they would have to bring proof how, uh, you know, how Israel didn't put their hope in God. But who says this is only talking about Israel? It doesn't say only Israel. But it shows as a symbol to the nations. Just like God is faithful to Israel, he'll be faithful to you. So therefore, accept my light and serve me just like Israel does. You understand? God is not talking just to Israel here. This is light unto the nations. This is for the nations. The symbol of God's relationship with humans is Israel. The difference between God and, and other, you know, fake, fake deities in, in, in the religion is that fake deities are willing to destroy their enemies for eternity. God sees, will the, will the next generation after the sinful generation serve me or not? If they'll serve me, then I'll forgive them. Why? Uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. Right? Sins of the father and the sons, sins of the father and sons uh, do, not, um, uh, do not cause each other destruction. Each person's uh, according to their own uh, their own uh, portion. Any questions? Okay. So we see that um, the the um, the heresy found in, in external documents from the Tanakh. Uh, which does not include the Talmud. The Talmud is subservient to the rules of Tanakh. And um, most other religious texts are uh, in opposition to the Tanakh. But we see that Tanakh, uh, God wants to have a relationship with every human. And whoever puts their trust in God will not be ashamed. And uh, mm -hmm. the answer it, you seem to find in, in uh, so many religions is that uh, believe in God in this specific way, or or there's a people have to face a damnation of this or that. Damnation only occurs according to the actual Torah of God if people choose evil. If people didn't know something and they made ethical choices according to their understanding, it's not assumed that they're going to, to be destroyed forever. That's not the assumption of the Torah. Remember the, the uh, previous um, previous in verse uh, thirteen, the previous standard was meekness. Humble people have a good chance to go to the world uh, to come. Mm -hmm. And what the symbol? What which which people on earth? An, of all religions are more of a symbol of meekness than the other, that would be women. And there's a Talmudic statement that um, a majority of men go to hell and a majority of women go to heaven. Fascinating. Because in most of history, according to this chapter, 
most we could say most of history, um, women were compelled into a meeker position. And of course, God is going to take the side of the meeker one. And the men were, were uh, doing whatever they wanted. And the women had to run around do, do twice as much work and get the less praise. And uh, they did their best. And whether or not they, they knew all the Torah, uh, all the Torah of Israel, uh, they still had a good chance to go to heaven. Whereas with men, they had absolute freedom. And they, therefore, they had uh, responsibility for their actions. So there has to be something more than what the secular world is offering. What, what's the, the uh, single greatest advancement in the last 20 years? Uh, you know, the, the focus is on a negation of one group for the sake of the other, you know, critical race theory, a negation of one gender for the other. So, uh, you know, now, again, now women throughout history were, were, uh, were from Talmudic perspective, the superior gender uh, before God. But it does not mean they should now become more like men because men were not the superior gender. By trying to make women into men, <laughs> now you're putting them at greater spiritual risk. Now, it could work out for the best. Remember, when, when someone like uh, Devorah, Deborah, or Huldah, uh, the prophetesses, had freedom, they were able to do much good in the world. But that's, you know, that's not the majority case. The majority of men are at risk of hell, according to the Talmud. And so now the, the great advancements in recent years for, for the freedom and liberation of women uh, it also is putting them in spiritual danger. This explains in parts why the, the messianic times are coming sooner. Because if you still had women definitely going to heaven, you still have at least half of the world's population going to, to heaven. But now, with, with these new movements, everybody's at spiritual risk. Everyone is becoming responsible for their actions before heaven, and therefore they could be in jeopardy unless they increase the study of God's word. But it has to be the actual word of God, not the, uh, the heresy filtered versions. So let's continue uh, more inside. Any questions? Okay, continuing verse uh, 24 in the Hebrew. Hayukach mi gibor malkoach v'im shvi tzadik yimalet. Ki cho amar denoi gam shvi gibor yukach malkoach aritz yimalet. Res yiri veich anochi ariv. Res panayich anochi oshia. Achalti es monayich es pesaram v'cha asis damam yish karun v'yadu ki cho basar kiani <laughs> we have a translator, verses 24 through 26. The nations asked, should loot be retrieved from a warrior? Should a justly captured person be allowed to escape? Yet thus said Hashem, even the captives of a warrior can be retrieved and the booty of fierce men can escape. I myself will take up your cause and I myself will save your children and I will feed your tormentors their own flesh and they will become drunk 
on their uh, uh, on their own blood as on sweet wine. Then all flesh will know that I am Hashem, your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Uh, so this is um, it's important that um, that there be justice. If uh, and if this was this was especially um, we saw this in the in the 1990s, whenever Israel was attacked, you, you had everyone screaming, "Don't attack back!" You know. Uh, trying to enforce turn the other cheek, which which is, um, which is a, a, a potentially heretical teaching, depending how you teach it. But it's it's not from the Tanakh. Uh, so the the, the turn the uh, the other cheek of the United Nations in the 1990s was um, bringing more and more bloodshed against Jews in Israel. So when there is justice, uh, then the good people are not hurt, and only tormentors, you know, suffer the consequences of their cruelty. A a uh, tormentor, like a terrorist, generally speaking, they, they're like leopards, and they don't change their spots. If uh, trying to treat them like any other reasonable person will just guarantee them a chance to continue their um, their psychosis, and which is to try to hurt other people. Uh, that's why when I, I made a peace plan for Israel, I made sure to put a terrorist filter that um, uh, Yes, um, Arabs can naturalize into Israel, but you'd have to first uh, not allow the terrorists to join Israel without uh, repentance. Uh, so uh, it's, it, this, this concept is in several places in Tanakh, and we see it here, that, um, that God is, at a certain point of cruelty, God doesn't act in his merciful way. So in the same chapter, God is called the merciful one, right? In the same chapter, he, he literally says, feeding your tormentors their own flesh. Okay? Why the dichotomy? Mm -hmm. God is the most mentally stable being in, 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 all of, all, in all of creation and beyond. So it's that's what it is from the terrorists. That is the fruits of their labor. They want utter cruelty. So a discussion of merciful one can only be by, by uh, the nations and Israel. A discussion of the mercy of God cannot be by the tormentors, by the terrorists. There's no mercy. They're not in the category of regular human beings. Applying mercy to them is ungodly because the creator of the world knows they have sacrificed to a different kind of, of idolatry, like the Molech worshippers. I, I asked, as a teenager, I asked uh, Rav Aaron Soloveitchik, why, uh, why does the Torah uh, say to annihilate the, the Canaanite nations? Uh, and yet, uh, God told uh, Yonah, Jonah to, to uh, try to save Ninbe from destruction. You know, so God obviously cares about the nations. So why, why was there permission to commit genocide against some of them? So Rav Aaron explained, uh, it's only in the cases of like Molech worshippers with, 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 uh, where they had child sacrifice. And if you want uh, more, uh, more uh, detailed uh, description of this concept, it's on my rabbinical blog. Uh, one of the um, articles with a picture of Rav, Rav Aaron Soloveitchik there. So uh, that's uh, rabbifriedlander.wordpress.com. Uh, but um, 
so only in the, in the case of uh, of of uh, child sacrifice, uh, those kind of cruel nations, where they teach the next generation to hate children, where brothers look at the other brother as hopefully somebody who dies instead of him, not a regular human being, certainly not someone to love. So therefore, such things are inhuman and ungodly to the point that you can't fix it unless somebody somehow breaks free of it. Similarly, our terrorists, the willing, those who, who are willing to sacrifice children for terror. You know, a, a, uh, a good country would try to not kill children. If they kill children, they'd at least feel bad about it. But uh, someone utterly dedicated to, to the destruction of anything, any civilization except their own version of it, is not trying to be a part of God's world. They're trying to you know, create their own uh, chaotic version of, of, uh, of Earth. And now, even if a human body dies, there's still the world to come. So for the wicked, for the absolutely wicked, uh, who have no chance of repentance, their destruction only means that they're not going to sin anymore. So it's good for them, it's good for the world. So that would be the only way for them? Yes. But, but that's if God chooses it. If we choose it, we know there are terrorists in the world. We don't know their, their thoughts. So as long as they're not active terrorists trying to directly seek the blood of the innocent, in, in Hebrew it's called rodef, a, per, a pursuer of the, the innocent. Uh, mm -hmm. So unless they're at, in, in a clear and present attack mode, we don't assume that, that a, a quote unquote terrorist must, must uh, necessarily die. Maybe they will repent if they see there's no more support for it. But now we're, we're in the past, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been going on a long time uh, that uh, rogue states have been supporting terrorists and sponsoring them and rewarding them. Even in the Holy, Holy Land, uh, the uh, the Palestinian Authority has been paying uh, terrorist families if, if somebody becomes a martyr uh, and, and kills himself along with other civilians. So, but it, at the very least, we have to recognize the evil in people who are dedicated to a cause at, at that level. You know, just, it's similar to kamikaze uh, pilots in, in World War II, you, you don't expect to talk them out of it. That's, that's their philosophy. They assume there has to be death. You know, so when you have that situation, you know, we're not God. We don't assume everybody must die unless God directly commanded like he commanded to Moses. But we don't assume leopards will change their spots. We, we don't act with naivety at the expense of civilian population. So it's, it's an absolute prohibition to make peace with, um, with wanton uh, bloodshedders. Uh, but to everyone else, God wants as many people as possible to be saved. So, so in other words, the implication of what Rav Aaron taught me was that uh, so people from uh, other forms of idolatrous worship that are not motivating their, their worshipers to kill children, even if it is obscene to God, he, he doesn't ask us to, to kill them. In fact, he's, he wants us to give them a chance to repent with the rest of the nations in, in the time of the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. So it's fascinating. They, they, in other words, there's two categories of idolatry. If it, if it results in the slaughter of the innocent, especially children, that idolatry is the opposite of what God, God wants. Stay away from it. Don't try to, to do outreach towards them. Have no mercy towards them. Because mm. they don't have mercy on their own children. Mm. 
-hmm. But to everyone else, we try to save them. And then if everyone else is being saved, maybe also any culture sees that the whole world is leaving them behind because of their, their uh, primitive behavior, maybe they'll eventually somehow start to break down their, their stuff. Um, but, you know, the, the warning of the Torah still applies. Mercy is not unlimited. If God is the merciful one, the personification of mercy, and he's saying in this very same chapter, I will feed your tormentors their own flesh, which is sounds like the opposite of mercy, right? But it's, it's just the, the fruit of the tree that they planted. Right. It's not mm -hmm. the will of God. So before you, we would pray for the souls of, of someone who is trying to kill their own children, first we would pray for their children to, to escape from their, <laughs> their clutches. Mm -hmm. You know, we, uh, mercy towards the merciful. Yes. Salvation, salvation towards the meek. Mercy for the children. Yep. But with in the case of the Canaanites, where you had a divine prophecy telling them, warning them, they had such a an educational system of evil, the Canaanites, the Canaanites, that the children were part and parcel of the such idolatry the children look forward to the death of their siblings it was it was like a bunch of uh, uh, sharks in frenzy mm. there's nothing you can do with that it just has to be removed from the world now there was one nation uh, so joshua was also commanded to drive out the nation right and he he faced 31 kingdoms he destroyed 29 kingdoms. One nation, the Gibeonites, uh, repented and joined Israel. One nation, the Girgashites, went into exile. And God said, "Give them, let them leave if they wish to leave. So the Girgashites resettled in Africa. And at first, they continued their, their child sacrifice. Why did God allow it? Right? The horrible monsters. But in exile, they were surrounded by other nations. And every African nation around them believed that you're supposed to be merciful to children. So what happened when they were isolated from, from the idolatry of, of the terrorists towards their own child? The Girgashites okay. repented. They changed. Mm -hmm. So the Girgashites are a symbol of what could happen. That terrorists can change their spots, but not if they're being supplied money for guns and bloodshed. Right. Not if they're being given strategic land as a reward for the, the more cruelty that they do. Okay, that's chapter 49 in Isaiah. This is an awesome book, man. Okay, so we're still in the Haftarah now for um, Akev. Let's continue. In the Hebrew, in uh, chapter 50. Chapter 50 is only 11 verses, so don't despair. We may get through this entire Haftarah tonight. Okay. O me no shy, a share my hearty as him low, hen babono sechem nim cartem, o fish echem shulcha imachem. Madua basiv en ish karasi v en ona Hakatsor katsra yadi, me produce vim en vi koach lazio, hen begarasi. Achariv, Yam, Asim Naharos Midbar, Kivash de Gassam, Main Mayim, Lusamos, Batsama, 
Albi Shamaim Kadrus Vesaka Sim Kasusam. Okay, can we have a translator for the first three verses of chapter 50? Thus said Hashem, what is your mother's bill of divorce by which I sent her away? Or to which of my creditors have I sold you? Behold, it is for your iniquities that you have been sold, and for your rebellious sins, your mother has been sent away. Why is it that I have come and there is no man? Why is that? I have called and there is no one who answers. Is my hand too limited to grant redemption? Is there no strength in me to rescue? Behold, by my rebuke, I dry the seas. I make rivers into a desert. Their fish become putrid for lack of water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens in blackness and make sackcloth their garment. So um, when, when God comes to redeem Israel in the end of days, they're acting in a large percentage of them implicit in this prophecy are acting like they're divorced from God as far as the um, continuation of the Talmudic law as found in Orthodox Judaism, which is a minority of the Jewish people today. So God is saying, uh, I have not divorced you. Why are you acting distant like you've been divorced? And now I've come to you. I'm, I'm available. I'm sending, you know, look at Torah anytime. Right? All, all those hundreds, I don't know, maybe they got a thousand speakers already. Hundreds of rabbis with uh, like endless, endless amount of Torah for free videos. You don't even have to open a book. Endless amount of uh, free Torah online, anywhere in the world, accessible. And how come it's like nobody is listening to, to the call? Nobody's answering? Uh, do people no, no longer trust that God can save? So uh, this is causing um, this is causing a problem in nature as a rebuke for failing to turn to God when God is making it easier to serve him. That's why I said, you know, it's it's a very good idea to share a kosher, a kosher link, a good uh, Torah class that, that you feel can right. help people in the right kind of link to the right kind of audience, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, you see, God created the, the world's. You, you know, solar systems, galaxies, universe. Uh, but all of it is so that people serve him. If people are not serving him, it's, it's, kind, it's kind of like God is saying, what's the point? He didn't destroy the world because he doesn't want to hurt the innocent. God is merciful. But he's, he's making certain weather patterns change, not because of global warming, but because of delayed repentance. The main thing is, in at least in this chapter, let, let the teaching of God reach you. Okay? Mm -hmm. let, let, let the message of God come to you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the thing, Rabbi, that there's mm -hmm. so many different messages out there that are being right. taught that's so confusing and there's just not one accord with it. That's why the Ten Commandments started out with, with talking against uh, idolatry. Mm -hmm. You know, it, if you want to be merciful to people, you got to get rid of that idolatry stuff. People, you know, yeah. thousand alternatives. It's hard for people, but the you know half of the world believes in in the events of the Old Testament, the the Tanakh, the Hebrew mm -hmm. Bible. But you have to tell people the only religion that doesn't contradict that is either 
Judaism, specifically the Orthodox traditions, mm -hmm. or the the Bnei Noach way, the children mm -hmm. of Noah. These two religions uh, both are faithful to the original teachings at Sinai, and there's no contradiction in any book of, of the Tanakh. And uh, similarly, the, the Talmud goes in with the same philosophy of, as the Tanakh. Other types of religious uh, texts all seem to contradict the Talmud, and not just the Talmud, the Tanakh itself. There needs to be more teachers like you that teach the truth, teach the way. Yeah, and or if we have a really good meme about Superman, <laughs> we, we, we can get like a, a million people to watch this video. <laughs> it's, it's just a sign of the times. And God, yeah. God is aware of this. But um, after Mashiach comes, people might ask, God, you know, why didn't you say something? You know, so God is telling us here, yeah, that bad weather, that was me saying something. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, the vast majority of people don't die from, from the bad weather. Uh, even in, in the, even of course in horrible hurricanes, often you find only like a, a dozen or two, quote unquote, only. You know, every life is precious. But you know, for for a, a giant hurricane affecting half of the continent, to only have a, a few people pass on is 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 another aspect of God's mercy. You know, the, there's, more, there's more proof of God's mercy even during a, a hurricane than the lack of mercy. And we see time and again, lack of mercy comes from people choosing it. And God says that even to his yeah. beloved Israel, so certainly for anyone. Okay, let's continue verse four in the Hebrew. Panai lohis tarti, mich limos varok, vadanoilhim, ya zorli al alkin lo nichlamti, alkin samti fanai kahalamish vaeda kilo evosh, pro matsdiki miyariviti, namda yahad miva al mishpati igashiloi. Zikos <laughs> Eshkechem Uvazikos, the Artem Miadihesa Zos Lachem, the Matseva Tishkavu. Can we have a translator of verses four through the end of the chapter, verse 11? I can do it. Okay. My Lord Hashem Elohim has granted me a tongue for teaching to understand the needs of the times in conveying matters to the to those who thirst for knowledge. He arouses me morning after morning. He arouses my ear for me to understand as disciples are taught. My Lord Hashem Elohim has opened my ear for me and I did not resist. I did not retreat to the rear. I submitted my body to those who smite and my cheeks to those who pluck. I did not hide my face from humiliation and spit. For my Lord Hashem Elohim helps me, therefore I was not humiliated, therefore 
I made my face as hard as flint and knew that I would not be ashamed. My champion is near. Whoever would contend with me, let us stand together. Whoever is my adversary, let him approach me. Behold, my Lord Hashem Elohim will help me. Who is he that will condemn me? Behold, they will all wear out like a, gra a garment. A moth will devour them. Who among you fears Hashem listening to the voice of his servant? Though he may he have walked in darkness with no light for himself, let him trust in the name of Hashem and rely upon his God. Behold, all of you are igniters of fire, kindlers of sparks. Go in the flame of your fire and in the sparks you have lit. From my hand has this decree come upon you that you should die in sorrow. So it's, it's a good idea to be on God's side, not against. But again, the, the, um, the key factor is humility. It's only possible for someone who's not at the bottom to go lower. It's only possible for someone who's high up to go down. So humiliation uh, cannot exist if somebody's already meek. You know, they've, they've uh, been downtrodden. They're used to it. It's not like they, suddenly their party was destroyed. But uh, the, uh, the arrogant, the hardy, they, um, their good times uh, end <clears throat> if they have to face humiliation. So those who are already meek are not at risk. A very good way to acquire humility is to study Psalms, the, uh, the uh, Tehillim, the Book of Psalms, and um, to recite it and, and to study the commentaries on it. It, it um, inspires one to humility. There's a verse on, <clears throat> on uh, Psalm 30. 30 uh, let's, I think it's 32. Thirty-two. Okay. Thirty. So in the art scroll. In the art scroll, Stone uh, Comish, uh, Stone Tanakh. This would be on page uh, 1460 61. Psalm 32, uh, verse 10. Uh, let's say 9 and 10. Atiuk Kasus, Gafar in Havin, Bemesic, Baresen, Edio, Livlon, Bako Velacha, Machum, Russia, Uh, be not like a horse, like a mule, uncomprehending, to restrain it with muzzle and bridle with when it is adorned, so that it not approach you. Many are the agonies of the wicked, but as for one who trusts in Hashem, kindness surrounds him. Uh, so the article brings uh, uh, that, uh, on, what does it mean, kindness surrounds him, according to Malbum? He is relieved by the awareness that his suffering is, is only intended for his benefit. Uh, so too in the Medrash, God says to Israel, uh, you know, why are you uh, worried in, in the time of, of troubles right before Mashiach? Um, why are you worried? I'm, everything I'm doing, I'm doing for you. Uh, but there's an incredible Medrash to heal him. <laughs> The Medrash on Psalms says, um, many are the agonies of the wicked. Uh, 
but but uh, for as for one trust in Hashem, kindness will surround them. So the Medrash says, Amar Rabbi Elazar, Amar uh, Rabbi Abba. Afilu Russia, Habotech Bashem Chesed Savanu. Rabbi Elazar said in the name of Rabbi Abba, even a wicked person who trusts in God, kindness will surround him. In Psalm 32. So a wicked person who trusts in God, it doesn't say that he, he's repented yet. And of course, this, this explains um, very well why Dustin and Aviram, Dathan and Abiram uh, survived uh, the, t the time of the, um, the golden calf and, and lived a couple of years uh, with, with, um, in the generation of Moses. Uh, even though, according to the Medrash, they're the ones who informed on Moses and nearly had him uh, arrested by, the, uh, by, by Pharaoh uh, when, when Moses uh, killed the, uh, the person who was abusing the Israelite. So uh, even though they were not necessarily uh, nice people in every respect, they, they had a confidence that God was going to keep his word. Now, they may have been so far removed from godliness that they objected to God saving Israel. Because remember, there's, according to the Medrash, uh, many, many people did not want to leave Egypt and, and they passed away. So, but the reason Dathan and Aviram survived is because they were confident they knew maybe even were, were afraid of it but they were confident god was going to fulfill his word to save israel because they trusted in god therefore they were saved even though they were actively wicked so we now have two strategies to survive any turbulence that may happen between now and when Mashiach comes be humble and trust in God. Oh, man. Yes. Now, just imagine if you add repentance to that, uh, to that, and wow, you got a nice little uh, spiritual, uh, you know, powerhouse on, on, on the works there. That's, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's finish up with the Haftorah. Uh, starting chapter 51. Any questions before we do? Okay, just, um, okay, there was a, the commentary I wanted to quote on verse 10 of chapter 50. This is on page 387 in the Arts Grow edition. Okay, so this is the fourth paragraph. Tr trust and rely on him. One trusts in something that may not seem logical. One relies on something that is tangible and understandable. Righteous people should seek natural means to rely upon without expecting miracles. But they must always trust that ultimately their salvation will come from God, even if the rules of nature, economics, and more do not give them hope. From the commentary, Tzidka Hatsadi. So trusting in God is, is just something we do. It doesn't matter the precise amounts. It's it's not it's not a calculation. It's just it's just a mood, a a, a persistent confidence, a resident confidence in, in in God. He's gonna do the right thing. It's always there in the background. Okay, continuing in the Hebrew, the first three verses of chapter 51. Shimu Eli wrote to Fei Tzedek, Mavak Adonai Habitu El Tzur Kutzavtem, Bel Makeves Bor Nukartem, Habitu El Abraham Bichem, Bel Sor Tcholelchem, Ki Echad Karatim. 
כי נלחם על נאי ציון, נלחם כוכר וסהר, ויעשה מדברק עדן, ויעשה כגן אדוני חסון ושמחה ימת שיבה, תודה וכל זמנה. We have a translator, first three verses of 51. Listen to me, O pursuer of righteousness, O seeker of Hashem, look to the rock from which you were him, and at the hollow of the pit from which you were dug. Look to uh, uh, Abraham, your forefather, and to Sarah, who bore you. For when he was yet one alone, did I summon him and bless him and make him many. For Hashem will, will comfort Zion. He will comfort all his, her ruins. He will make her wilderness like Eden and her wasteland like a garden of Hashem. Joy and gladness will be found there. Thanksgiving and the sound of music. Very good. And and actually the the title of the of that famous musical, the sound of music, comes from this verse actually. But um, it it's uh, if if you look at the trend that we've had so far in the past few chapters, it's like a sing song. God talks about uh, his role with Israel. He talks about Israel's status even in exile. He talks about his desire to, to be good to the nations. And he keeps going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this continues through chapter 53. Okay, and hopefully in, in next week we'll cover uh, 52, 53. Uh, so, uh, but let, let's continue in 51. This is very important. This is between another section that's between <coughs> Aftaras. It's between Aftaras. And if you believe these verses, it's impossible to accept the narration of the New Testament. Chapter 51. Okay, verse, verse 4. Akshivu alai ami, ulaumi, elai hazino ki sora meiti seitseu mishpati laor amim. Argia, Krov Tsidki Yatsa Yishi Uzrai Amim Yish Potu, Elai Yim Yikavu, Vel Zroe Yahilu, Seu Lashmaim Enechem, Babitu El Harts, Mitaches Koki Shemayim Keashan Nim Lahu, Varts Ka Beged Tivle, Yoshrek Kamo Kain Nimusum. Yeshua see the Olam Tihia, but Tika see Losechas. Shimu Eli, Yod Eid Sedek, Am Torasi, Livam Altir U, Karpas Enosh, Umi Gi Dufosam, Altechatu, Ki Haveged Yochlem, Ash Hasemar Yochlem, Sas, but Tika see the Olam Tihia, Yeshua see the Dor Dorim. Okay, can we have a translator? Verses four through eight. Pay attention to me, my people. Give ear to me, my nation. For instruction will come forth from me, and my judgment will be a light for peoples to whom I will give rest. My righteousness is near. My salvation has gone forth. My arms will chase nations. The islands will put their hope in me and will trust in my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth below, for the heavens will dissipate like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants will die as well. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will not be broken. Two more verses. Listen to me, you who know righteousness, the nation with my Torah in its heart, do not fear from the disparagement of man and do not be broken by their insults. For like a garment, a moth will eat them and like wool, a worm will cut them, will eat them. But my righteousness will be forever and my salvation for all generations. Amen. If you believe in the God of Israel, 
you must not mm -hmm. believe in the New Testament. It cannot be a part of the canon of the Tanakh, of the, of the Hebrew scriptures. It cannot be. No. So what is God, when God says my righteousness is near, what does he say right before that? My judgment will be a light for people to whom I will give rest. God is salivating to give rest, not just to Jewish people, but to Gentiles. That's, That's right. To Gentiles. Why rest? Because they're, they're <laughs> constantly worried about fake religious doctrine, utter mm -hmm. damnation, things like that. Their only oh. salvation is to do what, what their, their, their priest who happens to be collecting uh, money today uh, <laughs> uh, is selling them. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, utter doom. But God says, you're already saved if you just keep my word. You know? And um, it, it's 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 amazing, and and God says uh, repeatedly, okay. God says repeatedly uh, ver that uh, uh, verse uh, six, my well, my salvation will be forever, my righteousness will not be broken. And then He mentions the Torah. He He didn't mention the New Torah. He mentions the Torah, and then. Uh, but my righteousness in verse 8, but my righteousness will be forever my salvation for all generations. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the very next paragraph starts out with the words, awaken, awaken. Wake up, mm -hmm. wake up. It's time to realize that that which is against God's Torah is heretical to the Torah. God gave the Torah before millions of witnesses. It can't be a yes. lie. Mm -hmm. And the Isaiah is upholding the Torah even now, at, at, mm -hmm. at, at the height, at the height of, of, of his of his prophetic power. He's saying, God cares about the nations; they're suffering. He did not mention Israel's suffering here alone. He's he's worried about every human being, mm -hmm. and he says the salvation will be for all eternity. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. until there's a, a Roman emperor who you can impress by telling him he only has to do a couple acts of, of belief and he can get away with any sin he wants. You know, a, a byproduct of, of the, 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 uh, the heresy in the New Testament, it was that, of course, the, uh, the British uh, sy system of, of dispensations, people were literally prepaying sins and intentionally doing evil just by paying the church first so they can get away with it. It has nothing to do with the re religion from Sinai. And uh, of course, the Isaiah is a continuation of religion from Sinai. And if you were, were to study Talmud, you would also see it, it's a continuation of the religion from Sinai. It's all one. But the moment even a rabbi were to go against, God forbid, the Torah of Moses, they wouldn't be considered religious. You understand? The mm -hmm. system solid. And it's it's a system to convey this this point that God loves all of us, not just Israel. You don't have to become Israel to be saved by God. Amen. But it, it's it's helpful if you don't target Israel <laughs> because if Israel were to pray for you, there would be no more suffering as we know it today. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for learning with me. Look forward to next time as well. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Russell, we're thank pausing you. here. Chapter 51, uh, verse, verse, nine. verse 9. Verse 9. 51, verse 9. I will mark that, Rabbi. We appreciate the uh, we appreciate the lesson, and we're glad that you're back, and, and everyone had great holidays, and we can get back to studying the Tanakh. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank, Thank God. You, Rabbi. Thank God. That way. <laughs> <laughs>